boss was giving some visitors a tour of the Isle of Soda. It was their last afternoon, and Edward was preparing to take them to meet Bill and Ben. He found it hard to start the heavy train. Did you see him straining? asked Henry. Positively painful, remarked James. Just pathetic, grunted Gordon. He should give up and be preserved before it's too late. Shut up, burst out Tuck. You're all jealous. Edward's better than any of you. You're right, Duck, said Boko. Edward's old, but he'll surprise us all. I've done it. We're off. I've done it. We're off, said Edward, as he finally puffed out of the station. to the China Clay Works in a brake van special. dropping sand on the rails by hand. Suddenly, Edward's wheels slipped fiercely, and with a shrieking crack, something broke. The crew inspected the damage. Repairs took some time. One of your crank pins broke, Edward, said his driver. We've taken your side rods off. Now you're like an old-fashioned engine. Can you get these people home? They must start back tonight. I'll try, sir, promised Edward. Edward puffed and pulled his hardest, but his wheels kept slipping and he could not start the heavy train. The passengers were anxious. The driver, fireman, and conductor went along the train, making adjustments between the coaches. We've loosened the couplings, Edward. Now you can pick up your coaches one by one, just as you do with freight cars. That'll be much easier, said Edward. Come on, he puffed and moved cautiously forward. The first coach moving helped to start the second. I've done it! I've done it! puffed Edward. Steady, boy, warned his driver. Well done, boy. You've got them. You've got them. And he listened happily to Edward's steady beat as he forged slowly but surely ahead. At last, battered, weary, but unbeaten, Edward steamed in. Henry was waiting for the visitors with the special train. Sir Topham Hatt angrily pointed to, to the clock, but excited passengers cheered and thanked Edward, his driver, and fireman. Duck and Boko saw to it that Edward was left in peace. Gordon and James remained respectfully silent. 